we will now talk about the principles of option pricing we've seen payoff diagrams before but since this is an important topic I'll just go over this subject very quickly again let's first look at the payoff diagram for a call option and we need to understand the payoff for both the long call as well as the short call take a very simple stock which let's say as before stock IFT and let's say that you go long on this stock and the call option that you have has a exercise price of 25 exercise price or strike price those terms are synonymous with a payoff diagram the x axis represents the stock price and the y axis represents the payoff and if you recall for a long call the payoff looks like this where the payoff is zero as long as the stock price is between zero and the strike price and after that we have a linear curve or linear a line like this so if the stock price is one dollar more than the strike price say 26 then the payoff is one dollar and so on so this is the payoff for a long call now what about the payoff for a short call the short is sometimes also called the option writer the payoff for the short call looks like this so between zero and the strike price there we we, we are essentially the short is not making any payments because if the price of the stock at expiry is 24 then obviously the long will not exercise the option so the short does not need to make any payment however if the stock price at expiration is more than 25 then obviously the long needs to make a payment so the payoff for the short call is simply the mirror image of the long call remember this is a zero-sum game in the sense that when the long benefits then the short loses out so if at expiry the stock price is 28 that means that the payoff for the long is 3 and that payment has to be made by the short so the payoff for the short is minus 3 so that's your long call and short call what about a put option a put option is one that gives the long party the right to sell so a payoff for a long put looks like this again let's say that the strike price is equal to 25 on the x-axis we have the stock price on the y-axis we have the payoff so the payoff for a short I'm sorry this is a long put so if the stock price goes down to zero then the right to sell at 25 is extremely valuable and the payoff will be 25 and obviously if the stock price at expiry is more than 25 let's say 26 then the right to sell for 25 is worthless so if we are to the right of the strike price then the payoff is zero so this then is the payoff for the long put what about the short put short put again would simply be a mirror image so so this is the short put the maximum loss is 25 and obviously if the price of the stock at expiration of this put option is more than 25 then the long put will not exercise the option and hence the short put does not need to make any payments now let's talk about the concept of market price of an option intrinsic value and time value the market price of an option is how much you would buy a given option for i have referred to this before as the option premium sometimes we might just call this the value of an option so the point is this let's say that we continue with our simplistic example where you buy a call option on IFT where the strike price is equal to 25 
and let's say that this option expires in two months and let's say that the current value or the premium on this option is equal to three dollars so this means that in the market this particular option which gives the holder of the option the right to buy the underlying for twenty five dollars the value of that option is three so i'm using the term value or market price or premium all interchangeably now let's say that when the price of the call option is three let's say that the stock option is worth i'm sorry let's say that the stock is worth 26 dollars now the concept of intrinsic value is that <coughs> it, very simplistically the intrinsic value is s minus x so in our case if the option were to be exercised today the value of the option is 26 minus 25 which is equal to 1 so the intrinsic value of that option today is 1 and the time value is 2 why is this the time value because we still have two more months before this option expires and the reason this option is priced at three dollars today is that the market is expecting or hoping that the stock price will go up further and obviously if the stock price goes up further then the holder of the call option will benefit so due to that additional time and what can possibly happen to the stock during that time that is what gives this additional value of two and this too is called the time value so the basic relationship that you need to memorize is that the market price of an option at any given point in time is equal to the intrinsic value which is stock price minus exercise price for a call option plus the time value this same relationship will, will hold for a put option but obviously in a put option the formula for intrinsic value is slightly different so for a put the intrinsic value would be x minus s now let's talk about the lower and upper bounds on option prices and from an exam perspective this is a very important topic the first point to understand here is the terminology and we will first consider call options with a european call the minimum price is uh, represented by this expression and it's easier than it looks so let's understand the terminologies uh, to understand the terminology let's just look at this picture let's say that this is our timeline time zero is when the call option was issued we are looking at time t represented by small t and ct small c small t represents the value of the call option at time t big t represents the time when the option matures and so the distance or the time between small t and big t is represented by this big t minus little t and uh, ct is the value of the call option st is the value of the underlying stock at time t x as you are already familiar with is the exercise price and rfr stands for the risk free rate so essentially what we are saying is that the value of the european call option at this time t is at least zero and that's obvious because a call option is giving the holder an option so it must be worth something so the point of saying max zero comma something is essentially saying that a call option cannot be worth less than zero and then st minus x so all i'll just tell you a simplistic way of remembering this so we are saying that this is essentially the value of a call option is st the stock price minus the exercise price and this is the first level relationship this also should remind you of the intrinsic value and i am going to tie this with an example in the curriculum specifically i'm looking at example 2 on page 107 where we are told that on a given call option we have a exercise price of 70 so x is equal to 70 
and we are told that the option will expire in 42 days. So if the option expires in 42 days, then this t minus t is 42. In other words, this distance is 42 days. The, we are then told that we need to find the lower bound on a European call. So let's say that the underlying, so st they have given us as 72. So st is equal to 72. That means that at time t the underlying is trading at 72 and we need to find the lower bound on the European call option. So if we plug into this formula what we are saying is st is equal to 72. So 72 minus x is a strike price which is given as 70 divided by 1 plus the risk free rate. We are given that the risk free rate is 4.5 percent so we have 0 0.045 and then raised to the power of uh, t minus t now this is expressed in years so this will really be 42 divided by 365 and that is equal to 0 0.1151 so essentially we then raise this to the power of 0 0.1151. So it looks complicated but is fairly simple. All we are saying is that the minimum value of a European call option will be denoted by this expression and you just need to know what means what so you can plug in the you can plug in the stock price, the strike price the risk free rate and this is the time to maturity in years and essentially when you do this calculation you should get the get a value of 2.35 so that is the minimum bound on the value of a European call option with these numbers the maximum value at time t is obviously the value of the stock so what we are simply saying here is that nobody in their right mind will pay more than the stock price for a call option on that stock now this is a huge range so essentially we are saying the range is between 2.35 and 72 uh, obviously that's not overly helpful but nevertheless uh, in level 2 we will figure out exactly what the value is for now as long as you understand how to calculate the minimum value that is uh, that is good enough for a uh, american call what you can just uh, take as a given first of all the terminology for an american call is that instead of using small c we use a uh, big c and the lower bound is the same so this is the lower bound for uh, American call and the maximum value again is ST. So simple thing to remember the minimum value and maximum value for uh, both European call and American call we have the same formulas. The one point should be obvious these are just uh, high level or simplistic uh, uh, ranges but clearly the value of an American call should be greater than or equal to the value of a European call. And the reason is that with an American call you have more options. With a European call you can only exercise on the last day. And whereas in if you have an American call then you can exercise at any point. So that is why uh, American call will be at least as valuable as a European call. Now the curriculum gives a whole lot of explanation behind this. I would just encourage you to memorize these formulas and to know the fact that an American option will be worth at least as much as a European. So as long as you memorize this you are in good shape. Now what about put options? So here the now you understand the terminology so at time t the minimum value of a european put is obviously zero we can't have a put option if you own a put option that option has to have some value so it can't be negative and then you can essentially look at this other part of the expression that where you now know all the terminology so let me just write this out in a simpler way 
So what we are saying there is X, which is the strike price over one plus risk free rate. So I'll just call that R for now to the power of time remaining in years. So T minus T is the time remaining in years. If you have six months remaining, then this would be to the power of 0 0.5 minus ST, which represents the stock price at time T. This is the time at which you are doing the uh, finding the value of the European put option. And the maximum value of a put option is equal to X. So X over 1 plus the risk free rate to the power of time remaining. If time remaining is half a year, then you have 0.5. Very quickly, what's the intuition here? If you recall from an earlier discussion, the most that you can get from a put option is equal to X. So if you are talking about a American put option and you are at time zero, you have 0 0.5 years left to maturity. And let's say that the exercise price is equal to 25. This means that the absolute best you can hope is that at maturity the stock price goes down to zero which means that you will get $25 out of this but you can't uh, even but if the stock price even goes down to zero right here you cannot exercise the option here for a put option you have to wait till the last day so if the best possible outcome on the last day is that you make $25, the value of that today has to be the present value of 25. So that's exactly what we are doing here. We are taking the strike price and figuring out or discounting it back to time zero or actually time T. This is the time where we are valuing the put option. So this is the minimum possible value of a European put. This is the maximum possible value of a European put. With the American put, remember we can exercise at any point. So the maximum possible value for an American put, which is denoted by a capital P. So the value of a American put at time T, maximum possible value is X minus ST. So this is also simply the intrinsic value at a given point in time and the maximum i'm sorry this is the this is the minimum value of an american put and the maximum value is x y because even if before maturity the stock price goes down to zero you can then exercise the put option and your the money that you will get will be equal to the strike price so bottom line is that you simply need to memorize these relationships and I'll just tell you a uh, easy way of doing this. This is what I did. Uh, unless you have a lot of time, I would not uh, advise you to go and try and understand all the derivations because I have never seen a problem that, uh, at least on the CFA exam, that goes into the derivations. I have seen several problems that ask you to simply calculate the minimum value or the maximum value of one of these options. Now let's look at minimum value so one point to note is that obviously the minimum value has to be more than zero so that explains this part for for all the all the relationships and then for a european call or an american call remember the simplistic relationship is the stock price minus x so so that you knew already the at you at least since since a call option gives you the right to buy at x then obviously a call option would be worth at least the stock price minus X. And then rather than simply taking X, we can do a little better by taking the present value of X. So you simply discount X at the risk-free rate and obviously whatever time remaining to maturity, it is half a year, then you obviously need to uh, discount for half a year so it should be easy to remember s minus x and remember for x we simply take the present value and then the next point to remember is that we use the same relationship for both European and American that is a simplification because you do realize that the value of a uh, American option will be at least as much as the value of a European option. How much is that difference that we do not need to get into? With a put option, 
the maximum value, the first simplistic thing to look at is simply x minus st and here again rather than just using x you need to also discount x by dividing by 1 over r to the power of time remaining. Essentially in all in, in three out of the four relationships whenever you use x you actually have to discount x the only exception is the American put because with the American put if the stock price goes to if the stock price goes to um, zero or at any point actually you can exercise an American put so the quick thing that you need to remember is that out of these four expressions the only place where we don't discount x is the American put. So you notice that with an American put the X or the exercise price is not discounted here and uh, also with the maximum value the X uh, or the exercise price is not discounted. And just to repeat since American options give you essentially more options in other words you can exercise uh, anytime then it has to be at least as valuable as European options both for calls as well as for puts. Now let's look at the effect of a difference in exercise price and a simple way to understand this is let's say we have two call options A and B both are on the same underlying so in both cases the underlying is say one share of IFT and let's say that these options are similar in all respects the same underlying the same let's say both mature on 31st July so maturity of both is 31st July. The only difference is in the exercise price. So A has an exercise price of 25 and B has an exercise price of 30. Which one is more valuable? And the answer obviously is A because the right to buy at 25 is clearly more valuable than the right to buy at 30. So when we are talking about call options, then a higher exercise price as we had for B, then the value of the call option will be lower. A put option will be the opposite because a put option is the right to sell. So now if we have put option C and put option D similar in all respects, the only difference being that on C we have an exercise price of 25 on D we have an exercise price of 30 the underlying is the same for both then clearly the right to sell at 30 is more valuable than the right to sell at 25 and so with the put option if we have a higher exercise price as we have with option D then the value will be higher what is the difference uh, so effect of a difference in time to expiration now this effect is the same for calls and puts again the simple way to look at it is take two options a and b and they are similar in all respects so they have the same underlying the same uh, let's say strike price of 25 for both the only difference is that a matures on 31st july and b matures on 31st august so which is more valuable now the answer is b is more valuable because with b if you are if this is a call option and you have uh, bought an option bought option b then there is more time for the stock price to go up and hence there is a greater chance of your making more money with option b hence option b is more valuable going back to an earlier relationship that we talked about the time value of b will clearly be more than the time value of a and similarly if this is a put option you bought a put option because you are anticipating the stock price to go down and if there is more time till maturity as we have with option b then obviously the put option will be worth more for for uh, for this situation so put b is going to be more valuable than put a because we have greater time to expiration and this is uh, the bottom line is right here for both call and put options longer time to expiration 
the more valuable the option now we'll talk about put call parity and this is also important from um, from an exam perspective and this actually you will see this at level 1 level 2 and level 3 so the CFA Institute obviously thinks that this is important to understand put call parity we essentially need to create two simple little portfolios one is called a protective put the other is called a fiduciary call a protective put is simply a share of a stock let's say we call the stock s and a put option on that stock so we call that a p now the put option on a stock needs to so obviously there's an exercise price and we say that that exercise price is x so a protective put is a share of a stock plus a put option on that stock where the exercise price is x the second portfolio is a fiduciary call which is a zero coupon bond paying x at maturity and a call option with a exercise price of x so in very simple terms if we are here at time zero and let's say that this uh, we have 0.5 years to maturity the x simply means that or actually this uh, zero coupon bond paying x at maturity means that in our fiduciary call one of our assets or one of our investments here is a zero coupon bond which matures after 0.5 years and at maturity it will pay us x we also have a call with an exercise price of x so this call option needs to mature <coughs> over here so it will expire over here and the exercise price is x um, all the options that we are talking talking about here are european options and here is the relationship that you need to memorize the relationship is that the protective put is equal to the fiduciary call and we'll prove this on the next page but from a exam perspective you just need to memorize this so so the protective put is the stock plus a put option on the stock so we are long the put and long the stock a positive sign means that we are long so a protective put is equal to a fiduciary call which is equal to the call option plus at time zero what is the value of this zero coupon bond it is simply the discounted value of x so x over 1 plus the risk free rate to the power of time remaining which in my simple example is 0 0.5 let us now see how this relationship can be derived so first let's look at our fiduciary call so in a fiduciary call we we buy a call and we also buy the zero coupon bond what's the current value of the call let's say that the current value of the call is c naught so at time zero the call is c naught and what's the current value of the bond it's x over one plus r to the power of t where t stands for the time in years remaining between now and the maturity of this zero coupon bond so this is our uh, fiduciary call at time uh, at time zero which is our current time now what about the at, ex at expiration so at expiration there are two possible scenarios one scenario is that the stock price at time t and just the convention being used here is this is maturity so time t and zero represents the current time so at time t it is possible that the stock price will be less than the exercise price so for a call option if the stock price is less than the exercise price then the call option ends up out of the money so the value is zero on the other hand if the stock price is greater than exercise price then the value of the call option at expiry will be st minus x what about the bond so the current value is this 
at expiry the value of this zero coupon bond is simply going to be x so by definition so what is the total value of this uh, fiduciary call so this remember was the fiduciary call so the total value of the fiduciary call at time zero is simply c naught plus x over one plus r to the power of t the stock price over here so so the total value assuming that the stock price ends up less than uh, less than uh, x or less than strike price so this is simply equal to x and in this situation if the stock price ends up greater than the strike price then the total value of the fiduciary call at expiration is going to be s t so this shows our value at expiration now what about a protective put so now let's talk about a protective put what is the tra transaction for a protective put we obviously buy a put option and we also buy the underlying asset so we buy the stock at time zero so what is the current value the value of the put is denoted by p naught and the value of the stock is denoted by s naught now at maturity what do we have at maturity one scenario is that the stock price at time t will be less than expiration so in this case what is the value of the put option the value of the put option will be x minus st so the put option will be in the money the other scenario is that the stock price is going to be greater than the strike price so what's the value of the put option the put option then is out of the money so that's zero the value of the stock at time t is just st so what's the total value of the of the protective put the total value is either equal to x or it's equal to s t so notice now that no matter what happens at expiry the value of the fiduciary call and the protective put is the same so in the scenario where stock price ends up being less than strike price both the fiduciary call and the protective put will have a value of x and if the strike if the stock price ends up being greater than strike then both the fiduciary call and the protective put have a value of st so that essentially proves the relationship that a fiduciary call which is represented by this is equal to a protective put which is represented by p not plus s not and to help you memorize i will write this again remember uh, so we are saying that protective put is equal to fiduciary call so protective put is p not plus s not is equal to our um, fiduciary call which is c not plus x over 1 plus r to the power of t where t is the time remaining in years you need to memorize this relationship so even if you can't reproduce this whole example that's all right but you must be able to reproduce this equation now what is the concept of synthetic options and arbitrage so i'll explain this point in simple terms and then i want you to do the questions in the curriculum to truly understand this but i'll start by again writing that equation so protective put is equal to fiduciary call the protective put is p not plus s not is equal to the fiduciary call which is c not plus plus x over 1 plus r to the power of t now whenever you have a positive sign this simply means that you are long in that position so based on this what we can do is create something called a synthetic option so a synthetic put option for example can be created by saying that we have a call option plus the zero coupon bond and minus 
S0. So we've simply taken this equation and used some simple algebra to move S0 to the right side. And when we move S0 to the right side of this equal to sign, it becomes negative. What does negative mean? Negative means that we are short the stop. So what this is simply saying is we can create a synthetic put by going long on a call option, long on a zero coupon bond and short on, a, on the underlying stock. Similarly, we can create a synthetic call option by going long on a put, long on the stock and short on the zero coupon bond. We can also create a synthetic stock and so on. All you need to remember is to create this synthetic instrument we we simply play around with this equation and a positive sign means that we are long in that item a negative sign means that we are short now where does arbitrage come in the idea is simple if we have a situation where the market price of a call option is say 3.00 and we can create this synthetic option by doing this and let's say that the value of the synthetic option when we go long the put long the stock and short this bond let's say that this is giving us 3.05 so this means that there is a arbitrage opportunity when there is arbitrage you buy low and sell high so effectively what you can then do is buy the call option in the market and then essentially you sell this synthetic call option that's fundamentally what you need to know at this stage finally what are some other effects that you need to know what is the effect of cash flows on an underlying asset and what i mean by this is is the following so let's say you have your call option so call option c the underlying is a stock ift and this stock let's say is a dividend paying stock so this is this stock let's say is giving you a healthy dividend what's the impact on the call option if the underlying has a cash flow so the dividend obviously is a cash flow this cash flow is being made while the call option still has not been exercised so if there is this dividend what's the impact on the value of a call option and the answer is a call option is less valuable we don't need to go into the details but the intuition is as following when you hold a call option on a given stock the cash flow you don't you don't really own the stock you simply have the option to buy the stock now if the stock suddenly decides uh, to give a high dividend owning the call option is less valuable in other words it might make more sense for you to exercise the call option and get a hold of the stock so that you can get the dividend so in simple terms when a stock is paying dividends that makes the call option less valuable and the put option however becomes more valuable so just memorize that when the underlying pays a dividend or the underlying has some cash flow the call option becomes less valuable and the put option becomes more valuable what happens to the option let's take again a call option if the underlying becomes more volatile the way you can think of this is if the underlying initially is not very volatile then for some reason becomes very volatile so the stock price starts changing a lot higher volatility is good for the call option why because in a call option you make money if the stock price goes above a certain strike if the option if the underlying is more volatile then the probability of making money through this call option becomes higher and therefore the call option is more valuable what if you hold a put option there again with a put option you make money when the stock price goes below the exercise price and if the stock is more volatile or the underlying is more volatile the probability of making money from the put option is more and hence the put option is more valuable if the underlying is more volatile
and finally what's the impact on uh, on option value if interest rates change and the simple way to I, I'd suggest you just memorize this if interest rates go up then the call option becomes more valuable and a put option becomes less valuable if you insist on understanding the logic one simple way of looking at this is as follows if interest rates go up then let's say you believe that IFT stocks are going to do well if interest rates are high then essentially by buying call options on IFT rather than actually spending money and buying the the stock by buying call options you still have managed to get a positive exposure to IFT and the money that you have saved by buying call options rather than buying the stock that you can invest at a higher interest rate and that obviously is beneficial so whether or not you understood that doesn't really matter what you must just memorize is that if interest rates go up then call options become more valuable and put options become less valuable so that is it as always uh, practice real hard there are several problems in the curriculum you should do them all whether they are multiple choice or not and post your comments please if you have any and if you like this video then click on the like button if you found this clip interesting and informative please visit my website www.rfirfanullah.com here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material right here in the 2011 CFA video lecture series you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free and most of the material here is still relevant so this is worth looking at the 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2 these lectures are available for a fee and uh, finally down here uh, financial management at IBA here you will find my lectures at IBA uh, for a course on financial management plus you'll find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling so again please visit www.rfirfanullah.com thank you